first module that is introduction to DevOps. So the very first question is what do you mean by DevOps? What's your understanding or your definition of DevOps? Yes. So DevOps as you know it's a combination of two terms development plus operations right and uh, why we need to learn DevOps we'll cover this in this due uh, course and in this module we'll learn few terminologies and then we'll uh, see that why we need DevOps, what are the advantages of it. So here we'll be covering these topics. What is DevOps? What are the challenges there in this traditional uh, approach of software development lifecycle? And why we need DevOps? What are the advantages of using DevOps? And what's the skill set required to be a good DevOps engineer? So starting with uh, the definition of DevOps. So there was a person whose name was Patrick Debers, who actually known as the father of DevOps. That was the person who invented this term, DevOps, in around 2009. Right, so at that time, he felt that there is a communication gap between the two teams working in silos. Which two teams are those? Which are the teams? Development and operations. Yes. Yes. Development and operation teams. There were two separate teams earlier. They were working separately. There were very less communication between uh, the teams. They, they were not working in a collaborative and integrated manner. They were working in silos. And then that's the reason that person felt the pain between these two teams working in silos and that's when this term is invented okay so let's go back to the history a couple of decades back in the traditional development approach the traditional software development approach so well, when i ask you uh, so let's say waterfall model. That's one of the oldest and traditional way to develop our product. Uh, okay. So in that traditional waterfall model, so first of all, what is waterfall model? Can anybody just explain what is waterfall model? Yes, anyone? What do you mean by waterfall? I would say it's a sequence of uh, process, like starting from the requirement to hmm. the final uh, output of the product. Hmm. Like what, what else? Uh, containing of various steps. Okay. Hmm. Then. What are what are the disadvantages or limitation of this process? Uh, I think it's not uh, easily adaptive to the changes we want to make into the uh, product or application. I would say. Okay, let's go ahead. So yeah, as you said, it's correct. So waterfall is one of the oldest method to develop the software. That is, uh, it's one of the SDLC process. That is software development life cycle. Okay. So, in that model, as you can see on the screen, there are certain limitations where the various stakeholders are not very frequently communicating with each other. They are loosely coupled with each other. So, what are the stakeholders? Stakeholders can be your developers, your testers, your project managers, your customers, right? all these who are related to project in one way or another. They are the stakeholders. Okay, so in case of traditional approach,
okay so they are loosely coupled also another disadvantage is that this model is sequential in nature sequential means the previous phase should be freezed before we go to the next phase say first of all if there is a requirement for a product uh, to be developed we first do its requirement analysis that's a uh, uh, you can say planning phase then we go to designing high level design and low level design okay then we have coding then we have testing okay so all these phases are sequential in nature and each iteration each each phase takes a lot of time to complete it say on an average could you please go on mute thank you on an average if there are three users and right so on an average say when they what do you call it if uh, there is a designing phase in a designing phase of two types high level design low level design once you are done with the designing then you go to the coding part once the coding is freeze you go to the testing when the testing is freeze you go to the release so each phase is sequential in nature you cannot start the other phase one until the previous phase is completed so that's a very long cycle and in case there is an error in any of the phase you have to go back at the beginning and redesign recode retest and it's a very lengthy process that's one of the disadvantages that it's a sequential nature it's a very lengthy process then it's most of the steps are manual and the more manual intervention will be there are more chances of errors so they are error prone because uh, there are chances of doing errors if you are doing some manual stuff then that is a costly process if the errors are being caught at the later half or at the end of this uh, later phases of the product say you are getting uh, you are discovering or you got the error in the release part or testing part in that case you have to go back at the beginning and then follow the same set of steps again in sequential manner so that's why it's a very costly process to fix the errors there is a risk of instability to maintain it because the more manual work will be the more risk will be there and uh, the more will be the instability so these are few disadvantages of the traditional model especially waterfall model spiral model iterative enhancement model these are all old models which are no longer being used right almost not used then you have jenkins or other tools like uh, ci tool and then other tools are there uh, but these are these tools comes into the picture after you have agile uh, framework into existence so now the question is what is agile agile is a framework for faster development that's the whole purpose that it's a framework for quick development the literal meaning of agile or agility is faster development so if we compare it with the traditional approach like uh, waterfall model the agile model is more flexible more uh, fast as compared to the waterfall models like and uh, it's pretty quick you can easily get the feedback you can automate the stuff very easily which are the things which are missing in the traditional approach and then the question is how does agile differ from devops so we know that agile is a framework for faster development then how the devops differ from them where does the devops comes into the picture or i if i rephrase my question uh what is the uh, relationship or you can say difference between agile and devops so devops is an extension of agile okay uh, agile is a framework agile doesn't tell you about the implementation of ci cd continuous integration continuous delivery continuous deployment whereas devops is an extension of agile 
So Agile plus CI/CD makes it DevOps. Okay. So implementation of Dev DevOps proce uh, Agile processes with some tools, even though DevOps doesn't tell about any tools, it doesn't say that please use these tools or that tools. No, DevOps is not about tools. It's about taking the agile process or framework and implementing the CI CD with that. So it's not telling that you have to use these tools or even you have to use any tools. It's about implementation of agile processes and uh, integrating with the CI CD concepts. That's the DevOps. Okay. And then further, it's our choice which tools we choose in DevOps, whether it's uh, CI tools, whether whichever we need it. There are a lot of options in each and every category that we'll do it later. So in a nutshell that DevOps and Agile, the difference is uh, DevOps equal to Agile plus CI CD implementation. Okay. Now, if you look at this diagram, if comparing to the previous diagram, this is our previous traditional development approach. And this is the emerging technologies. This is the latest trend. Then what is the difference between the waterfall sequential model and this agile model? So if you look at this, in this, the stakeholders are communicating very frequently and they are tightly coupled rather than loosely coupled. Tightly coupled in the sense there is a, uh, they are more frequently communicating with each other. The bonding between the stakeholders is stronger. Uh, for example, developers, your line managers, product managers, release managers, even the customers and clients which are missing in the uh, traditional approach. In Agile, sometimes on a major releases, customers are also involved. So here we have a kind of uh, sprints. Sprints are a, a kind of uh, where we are working on a smaller sprints. These are the subtasks. So if you are working on a project, we divide it into the smaller sprints. And those sprints are smaller uh, iterations on which we are working on that. So now I'll be asking you a few questions on a child. Right, so what is sprint? Sprint is basically a time bound scheduled activity. Okay. And how we decide that uh, which sprint, uh, which activities will fall uh, in the first sprint and which activity will fall in the second sprint. This is based upon the priority of the tasks. Let me give you a very small example and a real time example for that. Uh, let me open a notepad. So, for example, you are a mobile manufacturing company. Okay, you are a mobile manufacturing company. Now, you have been given a project that uh, this mobile manufacturing company developed the mobile mobile handsets. And there are two ways to develop the uh, product. One is they can use the traditional approach, which is the older one. Second is they can go with the agile model. In the agile approach, they first of all, they review the requirements and decide that which tasks are more important and they create the sprints out of it. Okay. As I told you, the sprints are time bound activities, say two weeks of sprint. Each sprint is having a duration of two weeks. Some companies have one week sprint. Some companies has two weeks sprint. Now, in sprint one, what are the activities or the tasks they decide to execute? So if I ask you, what is the most important feature or a function of a mobile phone? So what you will tell, like what we do with the mobile phone, what is the basic functionality of a mobile phone? So the basic feature of a mobile phone is making the calls and receiving the calls, right? Mm -hmm. Calling yeah. system. Yeah. So calling system is the basic and that is incoming and outgoing calls. That's the most important feature. You should be able to make uh, a call and receive a call that you will keep it at the top sprint. That is sprint one. What could be the second 
most important feature of a mobile phone? It can be messaging. Uh, yes. It should be mobile. No, mobile no, is like the whole product. So I'm not talking about the mobile functions. What's the basic thing required from a mobile? The most important stuff is the calling system. Yes, yes. your second one is messaging. And second is after calling messaging, kind of uh, text messages you can make and receive the messages. Third can be your uh, multimedia applications like multimedia applications means music, audio, video, playback. Okay, you should be able to play audio and video clips. Right, and the last one is can be your uh, you can say uh, you can say smartphone features, right? Smartphone features like your apps, social media, WhatsApp, LinkedIn, right? All this comes in the last part because. See, if we compare it to the basic features, earlier we were having the basic phones when the, there was smartphones were not there. Still, we will be able to make the calls, we'll be able to send the messages, we'll be able to play our music and audio. That comes the topmost priority. Smartphone is an extension of the basic features, right? So if you want to develop a product, it should be in the same hierarchy, right? Sprint one, sprint two, sprint three, sprint four. And after the sprint four, you will deliver the product to the customer and you will release the product. Okay. Now there is a term that is MVP. What is MVP? Have you heard about it? Anyone knows that? What is MVP? Heard about it, but no, no idea to be honest. Okay. MVP stands for minimum viable product. Minimum. viable product okay so it means that whenever you are delivering a pro product to the customer at the end of the every sprint you are delivering something usable which the customer can use it so if you are developing a product in such a way that at the end of every sprint you are delivering something out meaningful which customer can use it so if outcome of the sprint one is the calling system is completed at least customer is satisfied and he can review that the calling system is working properly or not and the end of the second sprint customer can verify whether the messaging is working properly or not at the end of the third sprint he can verify whether multimedia applications working or not and at the end of the last and the final sprint you can verify whether smartphone features are working or not. So that, that's how you work in the agile model. So it's not randomly that you are delivering to the customers, but nothing is working at the every sprint, end of every sprint. This was the problem in the traditional approach. So in traditional approach or waterfall model, there was a designing requirement analysis, designing, coding, testing. Are we delivering anything meaningful to the customer? Can customer do anything at the end of designing? Can customer any, do anything at, at the end of the coding or the testing feature? No, customer is not getting anything meaningful or useful at the end of each phase. So only at the end of the release, then the customer will come to know whether the product is usable or as per the requirement that is working or not. But here, eSprint is designed in such a way that all the features coding planning coding testing release of this calling system is done completed in sprint one similarly for messaging all the phases is completed starting from designing coding testing and release so that way we are working in a iterative enhancement model on a smaller segment small tasks we divide the whole project into the smaller tasks that is sprints within those sprints we are working on these tasks is that clear 
that's known as MVP, minimum viable product. That's that's the advantage of agile model. And this is what is being shown here that in this agile model, the advantage is that the with this advanced technologies, we can quickly deliver the products to the customer and customers are tightly coupled. All the stakeholders are working very closely with each other. They are working in a collaborative and integrated manner. There is a very uh, clear and quick communication. Maybe daily we are holding a scrum calls for 10, 15 minutes during the start of the day with all the team members, uh, what we have done yesterday, what what's planned for today, are there any roadblocks or do we need any approvals? Is there something that is blocked for us? How we can get it working? All these are planned during the beginning of the day. And then sometimes we at the end of the day, we do that in 10, 15 minutes clock call. That's very important. And that gives, gives us the current scenario, current situation where we are now. Are we on track or are we are behind the uh, schedule? Right. So that's uh, how it works. Then. If you look at this, with the emerging technologies like mobile phones, social media, big data, cloud computing, all these are also supporting the way we develop our products, okay? Which was not there in the traditional approach. Nowadays, you have mobile phones available. You are not restricted to develop the websites, but if you only need the mobile applications to be developed, which can be accessed on your mobiles, you can do that. There are a lot of documentation or different frameworks are available or different uh, editors are available, which you can use for development of the products. You need not to develop the product from the scratch. Those tools are help, help you to develop the products in a faster way. Then you have a lot of uh, support from uh, cloud computing that you need not to set up your infrastructure from the beginning you can uh, use the cloud computing and ready-made infrastructure like you just need to register to any cloud uh, service and you can start create your account and start working on that so you need not to set up your own premises infrastructure and data center which incur a lot of uh, uh, cost and time that can be saved using cloud computing so also if you want to analyze the data there is a, a technique of known as big data. Big data analytics is there, which is used to analyze your products, like analyze your applications. Say, these days the data can be of any type. It's not only a traditional or, or a tabular data. There are graphs, videos, pictures. So data, in, input data can be of any type. So how to analyze that data? For that, big data helps us to do that. Right? For example, there are some live matches are going on, right? So some matches there, or you also have some data which is uh, producing a lot of graphical outputs. So in order to interpret that graphical data, we can make use of that data analytics and big data. That's very useful. So these latest technological trends helps us to uh, develop our product in a better way, right? So that's what it's being discussed here in this slide.